Ryan or Terry or Paul. Um, but uh, coming up on the stage here is uh, a, a mentor to me personally and also, also through health and fitness. Uh, he's really kind of a pioneer um, for our, uh, our offices. And every year, he puts together uh, what's called a health reset detox. And so uh, we're going to have Terry Givens come up to the main stage here. He's part of the Passive Income Club as well, but one of his major passions in life is health and taking care of people, you know, and, and helping them meet their goals. So without further ado, uh, Terry Givens, everybody. Hi. this thing on? Am I too loud? Morning. How's everyone doing after their uh, Saturday night in San Diego? Yeah, I see a lot of empty seats here, so some people are still recovering from Saturday night. Who went to the comedy show last night in the Inner Circle? Is that pretty funny? Yeah, I missed out on it, but I want to hear some jokes. I hear there's some uh, postings on Facebook of events that occurred last night, so I'm, I'm interested to see how... Really? Ask Terrence. Oh, he's not here either, huh? Interesting how this all works out. Ah, Ralph. That's why Ralph isn't here. He's like, Terry, just go up, bro. Just go up. It'll be fine. Uh, so what I want to do here, guys, first off, I want to thank the Fortune Builders team for having me up here for an opportunity to kind of talk to you guys about something I'm really passionate about, health and wellness and kind of growing younger as you age kind of process, I like to, I like to call it. I want to thank Fortune Builders. I also want to thank you guys for getting up a little earlier to come on in here to uh, learn a little something about how to constantly improve and grow as a person. Because as Nate said, that's a big thing in Fortune Builders. Big thing. Oh, by the way, uh, the, the, we're having interesting situations with the sound system today. So Mike is... is everyone give, give a big, big round of applause to Mike, please. Mike is, Mike is fighting with the hotel staff. I mean, they're just grappling with one another, trying to get this thing taken care of. He's throwing guys around. So if anything pops out, I'll just talk a little more loudly, but it won't be a big deal, right? Right. All right we'll take care of it all. So thanks for coming in a little earlier. I'm going to talk for about an hour or so about we're not going to do anything wild or crazy, right? We're not doing calisthenics. We're not doing any, any, any uh, drastic changes to your life. I just want to kind of help you guys understand a few concepts that I think will actually help your business, all right? Because Stan said yesterday, how you do anything is how you do everything, right? So if we want to have this great, explosive, powerful, uh, gigantic business, but we don't really have our bodies in order, it's going to be hard to enjoy a lot of these things we're trying to create, right? You ever uh, wake up, not like this morning for some of you hungover people, with a little less energy than you really want to get up and kind of make things happen. You ever had that feeling where you're like, I don't really want to get out of bed today. I got hours to do with my job. After work, I'm kind of dragging. It's hard for you. Who's, who's, got, a, um, who's got a day job now? Other than who's not full-time real estate? Who has a day job right now? Hold my pie. Right. So you guys already have a day job. By the time you're done at your day job and you get home from work, you've got craziness with the boss or you're the boss and you got some crazy employees or whatever it is, sometimes you don't want to do what you have to do to fire up your business. You don't want to go make another bandit sign, right? You don't want to deal with making more phone calls. So we want to try to figure out a way to show you guys how some ways that you can really explode your business and uh, do some bigger and better things. So I'm going to try to cover three things. I'm going to try to show you how to boost your confidence. I'm going to try to show you how to uh, explode your energy levels so you can get things done. And if we do that right, that's going to fatten your pockets. So that's the goal here. Uh, let me tell you a quick story. I'm going to talk to you for about an hour or so about health and wellness. So is it okay if I tell you why I'm qualified to talk about that? Yeah. All right, good. Because I don't want you just thinking I'm up here rambling. Socks. It's mostly what well, today. This is this is the new stuff here. You guys aren't down with the uh, with the sock game. I'm telling you, it's how it works. Uh, first off, I do something here other than have Than talk about my my singleness. Thank my. Yeah, thank you. I'm what's called. I'm our senior wealth advisor here at Fortune Builders. So myself and Nate Hall. Everyone say hi to Nate. John Blackburn. Everyone say hi to John. And Ryan Connell's probably around the room somewhere, and Paul Shively runs our division. 
So what we really do for you guys is we build the plan so that someday you can have a passive income portfolio so you don't have to flip houses until you're 80, 90 years old. Right? So that's why we're here. We build those strategies. We sit down with you guys. We go over a step-by-step -step plan. And then companies like Memphis Invest, Dallas Invest, those are the companies that you actually go purchase these properties from. So that's what I do at Fortune Builders. But a big passion of mine is this health and wellness side of things. So uh, as it's been said a number of times, I am 40 years old. I just had my birthday last month. So that was a big milestone for me. And thank you. Thank you very much. Um, here's my story. I'm from Ohio. So I'm not a California guy. I haven't, I wasn't, hey, who, who else is from Ohio? Can you Ohio people, folks, folks here? Let me hear you. Let me hear you, Ohio. There's nine Ohio folks here. This is awesome. I'm from Cincinnati. So a big thing in Cincinnati is not healthy juicing. It's not cleansing, detoxing in Ohio. It's Skyline Chili is amazing. La Rosa's Pizza, fantastic. So I'm brought up to eat three meals a day, mostly of meat and of potatoes. Yes, thank you. Delicious. And then I have mid-meals between those meals to keep me from getting hungry. So that's my lifestyle. So I didn't eat, I never ate very well, right? I, I used to go, I'd, I'd eat fast food twice a day. Because to me, Burger King was different than McDonald's, <laughs> right? The different menu, the patty was different, the fries were different. Uh, Wendy's, a whole different deal than it was from Taco Bell. <laughs> so literally, I'd get up in the morning, I'd go grab, I'd crush some fast food in the evening. Uh, in the morning, lunch, evening, I, I have a picture. So my life has changed significantly from what it is now. I actually have a picture of what I used to look like. This is the old me. <laughs> it's back. Do you guys know who that is? Who knows who that is? Biggie who? Biggie Smalls. Biggie Smalls. He's a rapper. Yes, he's a really good rapper. But that's not really old me. I don't have that much lyrical flow in myself. But my deal, I never was really overweight. Right? I never had a really big weight issue because we all have a different weak spot in our bodies. Mine didn't happen to be that my terrible lifestyle went into fat. My terrible lifestyle went into my joints. Right? Everyone's different. Some people, their lifestyle goes into their, their, uh, their brain cavities. Right? Some people, it turns into fat, which is, those are the, really the most healthy people to fix because we can see it. Right? It's the people whose uh, weak spot is their heart. That's a hard one to identify until they're running one day and they drop dead. Right? It's hard to identify the people, uh, maybe some people's weak spot is their skin. But everyone has a weak spot from their lifestyle choice. Mine was my joints. In high school, I, I had hip uh, issues, so I couldn't run track. This is all starting to hit me by high school. I uh, played college uh, volleyball. I'm the captain of the volleyball team. Rolled my ankles. I was out half the season. I, if I'd fix the left ankle, then I'd roll the left one, the right one the next time. So I, my joints were crap. My shoulders were crap. I got shoulder surgery. I had knee issues. I'm a big volleyball player. I had 32. I couldn't play volleyball for two years. I just couldn't jump. My knees were shot. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm just getting old. That's how it, I remember 32, I couldn't, I had a CD rack, and I couldn't bend down and do this to grab CDs down. It hurt too much. I had to, like, do the old deal. Who's got bad knees? Like, is it tough to do this, this deal right here? Yeah, at 32, I was like, well, I guess I'm just kind of getting old. Uh, old is crap. Don't you ever believe you're getting old? There's no such thing as I'm getting old. I'm serious. That's a crap excuse. I used it. So... I, that was my weak spot, um, and for me, I started this process around 32, 33 years old. Who's ever been to an Anthony Robbins event? Anthony Robbins, personal development speaker, guru. You guys really, really, really need to go to see Anthony Robbins. He's to the level. He'll, he will change. He will empower you to change your life on so many different levels, very similar to what we do here at Fortune Builders. But it was a four-day event, and day number four was all about health. So there I am. I had muscles. I thought I was cute. I'm like, uh, do I need to go to health day? And like some of the people that are not here now, I almost didn't go. Right? But I went anyway because I want to get my money's worth. It's a $1,700 event, right? So I go to the day four, and that event changed my entire life. 
it helped me understand the difference between fitness and health. Because they are not, who knows that fitness and health are not the same thing. All right, the rest of you, I'm going to help you understand that here towards the end. But it helped me understand that. It started me on this amazing quest. So I just started devouring books and information and seminars and webinars and uh, I went to events and documentaries and I just went on this quest because I'm, that's kind of my, my personality and it's, it made sense to me and I started incorporating all these things into my lifestyle that I'm going to show you here in a minute and I started doing what I like to call resetting my body. And resetting because it's nice. If we're a brand new baby, we could do everything perfectly, our health would end up great and we'd make it all the way through life and not have any issues. But the problem is we've been doing this stuff for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years already, so we need to do something to fix the damage. So resetting your body is a way that I started fixing the damage in my body so that now, at 40 years old, I can whoop the 25-year-old Terry's ass. That's important to know, and you can do the same thing with yourselves. So I'm going to cover some quick things to help you understand how that's going to work. I've been doing this for about seven years or so. So once again, that is not the old me. Don't go out and buy my old CD. Uh, let's talk really quickly about how to reset your body and why. Why? why are, what's the big deal? Why do we want to do this? Because we as a nation probably need to. So a couple things. Two-thirds of the population are obese or overweight in America. That's more than half. So that's a lot of people. So we need to do something a little differently. And it's funny, in America, who's, who counts their calories when they eat now? Any calorie counters? Anyone read the labels and they're looking at how much sodium is in the things they're eating? Anyone checking out how much, uh, how many, uh, how much, how many carbohydrates are in there? We are the most intelligent society in the country on analyzing the nutrients in our food. But two thirds of us are still overweight. So sometimes we, we know a little, we know a lot about food, but we know nothing about how to eat and how to consume and how to live. So, um, 15 million people have diabetes. Right? It's a lot of people. So we just need to do something different. Half the population uses prescription drugs every day just to kind of make it, half the population, which means if we didn't have those drugs, those people would be at an issue. How was life, can you imagine how cavemen lived, right? They didn't have the Surgeon General. They didn't have the interweb to look up how to eat and how to drink. How did they even, how did we make it this far as a species without having all these experts to teach us how to live and how to eat? So I'm going to super simplify all this stuff because who thinks it's amazingly complicated how to eat, right? What foods you eat when? How many times a day you have to eat it, right? What order do you eat it with? What can you combine it with? All these, it's amazing. You have to have a degree in food to eat the way we broke it down. So I'm going to try to make this, all, this stuff all super simple. Is that okay? I want you guys to leave here and you take responsibility for your own health which will then turn into that vitality that you need so that you can do these things that we're teaching you here this weekend, right? It's going to be tough for you to implement. Who's learned a lot of stuff this weekend? Who can use next week? Who can use all of this that you've learned next week and do something with it? Impossible. No, you can't. <laughs> Trick question. There's way too much stuff here. Jeez, little peace. You blow your head out. But you're going to need to start implementing this, and you need to have energy. You need to have that, that drive to make it happen. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. So I'm going to teach you three things when, you, when we're in here this weekend, this for this hour or so. I'm going to teach you how to boost your confidence. I'm going to teach you how to explode your energy. That's going to turn into fattening your pockets. So three things. I'm going to, I'm going to teach you how to boost your what? Explode your what? Energy. And we're going to fatten your what? All right. Good. You guys participate well. Um, first off, first thing I want to do where's that at? is talk to you a bunch about I want to help you believe, first off, because the people yesterday, when Than said Terry's going to jump on stage and take off his shirt, half the crowd left after that, for one. The other half said, I don't need to go to the health thing for different reasons. One, maybe they're in a good physical shape, so they didn't think that it was something that was of interest to them. That's cool. I remember being there in my mind. But some people really don't believe that you can get healthier, right? They don't believe that you can be better, that you can have more energy. We forgot what it's like. Do you ever see a kid wake up on Christmas 
and they're running all around the damn house going crazy, playing with toys, jumping up and down, screaming, just having all this energy. Each one of us used to be like that. And we were jazzed up about stuff. But every year, gradually, we kind of forgot and we got a little more lethargic and we started taking a little more naps and we started being a little harder to wake up in the morning. So we've kind of forgotten that vitality we had. So I'm going to talk to you about helping you believe a little bit, and then we're going to go into eight easy super steps you can do every day to start to have more of that energy and that vitality back again. So um, what's your, you have your sheet. Pull out your, your sheet there that, um, that, that's on your desk, and at the top of it you'll see what's your most limiting health belief. And I'm going to make a little list up here. So, for instance, one of my limiting health beliefs when I was at my Anthony Robbins event was that if I got sick, there was a pill that would cure me. Right? If you got sick, which, what does that do? That keeps you from taking responsibility because you figure there's no consequences to what you do, right? Right? A lot, and another limiting health belief I had was um, that, hey, it runs in my family. Right? So, hey, there's nothing I can do about that. This, these, these things run in my family, so there's nothing I can do. So it limited me from taking action. What are some limiting health beliefs that you guys have about what your health means and how much power you have over your own body? You can just shout them out to me. Not enough time. No time to get healthy. You're too old. I hate that one. Too old. Too old. Too much work? Yep. Too much work. Organic. Good food costs too darn much. No discipline. Send the fan. You like this? Some of this is shorthand. Some of the spelling here is shorthand. Uh, Your genetics. What else? What other limiting beliefs that you're like, well, you know, I'm doing what I can or I, I can't control. I have no, I don't have the control I need over my own body. Whether. Good. It's too much of a sacrifice. To be healthy, it's a lame lifestyle. Being healthy, they're just these, these uh, generic people. Lame lifestyle equals healthy. It's funny because people say, you eat? I had a cookie yesterday. You eat cookies? Yeah, I eat cookies, man. <laughs> I eat the same stuff everyone else eats. I just don't eat it 95% of the time, right? I enjoy, I, I'll have pizza, I'll have my uh, lasagna, I'll knock out um, a chest pie here and there, I'll, I'll destroy some uh, pudding. Man, I made this amazing pudding <laughs> for uh, the Super Bowl. People were, they were wringing their finger around the bowl of the banana pudding I made. Yeah, I make pudding. Had an amazing um, cheese turkey dip. People were hovering over the stove, just eating it. You're supposed to dip stuff in it. They just ate it, put it straight in their mouth. So we, you eat normal stuff. So that's, that's a limiting belief as well. So right on your sheet there, put some limiting beliefs that you have about your own health. Like, I'll, I'll let you, I'll tell you a story about my father. Uh, my father, coolest guy in the world, um, he's not very healthy. Right? The, it's funny, the ones closest to us are the hardest ones to affect a lot of times with some of these things we believe in. And my father is, is over 300 pounds, big guy, happy guy, cool guy, one loves Pete. And my father doesn't believe that he can lose the weight and get back to what he used to look like. He doesn't believe that he can get back to his old self. So it's interesting, if you, if you don't believe these things, why would you even do anything about it? Right? If you don't believe that you're going to make a great profit from a rehab because a friend, a guy you know tried to rehab and didn't work, why would you even try? Why would you even get put banded signs out? Right? Why would you even go to all these rea meetings if you don't believe that you can actually do this? Which is why we always tell you guys stories of other examples of folks right here in the room that are making money and making it happen. But if you don't believe that you can get off of the prescription drugs, if you don't believe that you can be healthy again and look the way that you wanted to, why would you even do any of this stuff? So step one is you've got to believe this stuff or you're not going to do anything. It'd make all the sense in the world, but if you don't believe it's going to affect you, you won't do it. So put an analogy up there. If a caterpillar doesn't believe 
that he can turn into a butterfly, why even waste the time spinning the cocoon? Fortunately, caterpillars don't read a lot of books or go on the internet or <laughs> goof off and hear stories about other caterpillars didn't turn into butterflies, so it doesn't affect them. But think, think about that for a little bit. Think about where you got your beliefs on what, you're, what you really can achieve in your body. And one of the reasons that people don't believe is we, we got in his head that we are these frail, fragile little creatures that if some germ gets on us, we're going to get sick, right? Who's afraid of, who, who, go, who every time they see one of the sanitation machines, who's in there immediately scrubbing and putting the gel on and wiping it all over their body here? They don't, they don't want to get sick. So we are afraid that some germ's going to take us down. And, is that an empowering belief or a disempowering belief? It's extremely. You're just afraid of everything. You can't touch a thing. Drop food on the ground. I'll eat food that's been on the ground. Five seconds. Five second rule, right? I'm not afraid of getting a germ, right? If, you, if you're afraid, we think we're so frail and fragile. So I'm going to remind you that you, you are in possession of the most powerful, complicated, intricate, creation, this machine that exists on the planet Earth. We are not frail, weak creatures. So a couple quick facts about this amazing body that you guys have. The stomach's digestive acids are strong enough to dissolve zinc, right? Fortunately for us, the cells in the stomach lining renew so quickly, the acids don't have time to, to dissolve it. So we have a powerful bunch of stuff going on in this. We are not these weak, fragile things that are, that are dying off left and right, and we're, we're rolling our ankle every time we step off a curb. Or we reach up too fast from a desk to grab a file and we throw our back out. Right? We're in a weakened state when all this stuff is happening. Human bone, it's as strong as granite in weight. A block of bone the size of a matchbook can support nine tons. You're very strong. That's four times as much as concrete can. So we have very strong bodies. We have an amazing body. Your body is constantly trying to build. It's constantly trying to repair. We just got it all screwed up here recently. So you're not that weak. Bunch of those. Your heart beats 100,000 times a day. Your blood's in a 60,000 mile journey. Your eyes can distinguish one million color surfaces. Our hearing is so sensitive, we can hear hundreds and thousands of different sounds. Your sense of touch is more refined than any device, an iPad. You want to know something that's frail and weak? This damn thing, right? I just dropped this this morning. I cracked the screen on my iPhone. Thank you. Pity party. Pity party. This is a frail item we must handle gingerly. Your body is not. Your body is strong. It's very powerful. We need to treat it as such. We need to believe that this thing was made to be the highest life form on the planet Earth. We're running this thing. We're the top of the food chain. We eat everything else on the planet. Okay? Remember that. We're not weak and frail. <laughs> we do. Um... A lot, a lot of stuff here. A lot of your body is constantly growing and creating. So remember that when you're thinking about how frail and weak you are. So on your sheet again, list on your sheet, what's your biggest health challenge right now? Not necessarily a health condition. You know, maybe, maybe you don't have, maybe you think you don't have enough time. You know, maybe it's the fact that you have an injury, you have a knee injury that won't allow you to run, to take uh, the runs that you want to go on. Maybe you don't have enough money to buy the, the better quality food to put the proper type of uh, power and energy in your body. You know, or maybe it is a health situation. Maybe, so just put on there what your biggest challenge is to your health right now. Once you kind of start thinking about this, is what's, what's challenging you? What's keeping you from taking the next, the next step to do something about your health? Maybe you don't have any energy. Maybe you wake up in the morning, you're so darn tired, and you work so much, and the kids are running around. You're like, I just don't have time. I don't have energy. There's nothing I can do. I'm just destined for the rest of my life to, to live out the way that I am. Maybe, maybe that's the challenge you're having right now. Um, because once again, I'm not talking about, you know, this isn't a beauty contest, right? Maybe you're very happy with the way that you look, but health is not fitness. Who remembers uh, Flo Jo, Florence Griffith Joyner? Track star from the Olympics, the fastest woman on, on earth. Yes, there you go. Died. Died in her sleep. Was not a very healthy woman. She was amazing, amazing body, amazing athletic activities, but she wasn't healthy on the inside. 
So I'm not going to make you all drop down and do 100 push-ups. That's John's job, by the way, if anyone's ever been to a boot camp. John did, what was your most push-ups you did at one of the events? 117 consecutive push-ups. Give that guy a hand. He's worried that we're going to have him do 118 one day. Terrified. But that's one way. That's physical fitness. So I'm not asking you to, to get cut up and get ripped up and do all that. I'm just asking you to be healthier, live a healthier lifestyle. And we'll talk about more what that means. Because health really is energy. Right? Health is energy. I'm going to simplify this a whole bunch. It is not how, how attractive you are, how big your muscles are. It's not how, uh, how many marathons you run and all that stuff. Health is that energy that's inside of you that's at the cellular level. Right? Cells are the basic building blocks of life. Right? So a couple things about what your body is. Your body is made up of... So we have tissue, right? We have all this, this tissue, this skin, these organs. You have a heart, you got lungs, you got liver, you got all these, these organs that come together. And these organs are made up of tissue, right? Muscle, uh, fat, ligaments, tendons. So we, we break your body down to the lower level. And then what are all these tissue and muscle made of? If we go down to the basic structure of your body. It's just a bunch of cells. Right, your body is a hundred trillion cells, and they all have a specific purpose. Right, liver cells know what to do. They have a very simple organisms. They do stuff for the liver. Right, heart cells, they're very specific to the heart. They do stuff for the heart. So I want you to understand that you don't need to be an expert on how to fix my heart. Right? You just need to be an expert on how to fix my cells. As long as you can fix, you can make your cells happy, the cells will do what they are supposed to do. You don't have to be an expert on, on how to work out and which food's going to help my, my, cell, my uh, liver the best, which food's going to help my skin the best. You don't need to know all that stuff. You just need to know what can I do to make my cells as healthy as they can be, and then the magic starts to happen because they work better, so they do their job better, and all these things that you're... Are un, how is this unrelated to this process that I'm going through? Your body starts to take that and run with it. So... What benefits a single cell benefits the whole body? What's good for cells? Cells need three things. Number one. Number two. Number three. All right. So we need oxygen. Oxygen is number one thing that your cells need. Number one. How long can you live without oxygen? A couple minutes, you're dead. Right? Oxygen is that important. You go a few minutes without oxygen, you're dead. You're a dead person. How long can you live without water? few days, some people up to a week, right? So water, very important. You cut that out of your diet, you're dead in a week as well. And waste removal. Whenever cells metabolize and do things, they make waste, right? You don't have to eat Cheetos and, you know, stuff all day long to have waste in your body. Your, your cells metabolize and they have waste. So you have to get that stuff out, right? That's the key. Uh, they did a study back in the 20s on chicken cells, Right, So they, they took a Petri dish, and they had chicken cells, and they would maintain a, a level of oxygen in the, in the Petri dish for the cells. They would water, they put enough fresh water in there to keep fresh water in, and then they would find a way to remove the waste from the chicken cells. And these cells last pretty long. Who knows, it's a trivia question for you, who knows how long a chicken, the average chicken, lives? Who's very, where are you from? Chicken expert right here chicken pro. The average chicken somewhere around 10 to 12 years is how long a chicken will live. That's a lot of eggs. And then when it's done, do you eat it? What, can you eat a 10-year-old chicken? Is that any good still? Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't know what happens to the old chickens. No idea. Well, that's probably the, the stuff we eat. That's McDonald's. That's McDonald's chicken is what happens. That's where the old chickens are. I just never thought about that. So we have this this an average chicken egg, a chicken cell, can last, well, a chicken itself can last about 10 years. They had these chicken cells lasting, it went to 30 years, and then they had to scrap the experiment because who the hell wants to watch a bunch of chicken cells in a Petri dish? So chicken lives 10 years. Chicken cells made it 30 years with the proper amount of oxygen, the proper amount of water, 
and a way to remove the waste. So the cells can do better. This, we're just a bunch of cells, right? So why can't the chicken live as long as the cells? It wasn't an optimal environment. Why can't you live as long as, you're, as our full potential? We're not in our optimal environment as well. So we're, we're just a bunch of cells. As long as we can put the three main things, the oxygen, water, and waste removal, your body will start to fire on up. The cells will re-energize, and they'll do better what they're supposed to do. So I just want to put that simple concept in there so you don't have to think you need to be an expert on how do I fix this particular ailment I have. Who cares? Let your cells do it for you. Right? How, do, how is this going to affect this thing that I'm experiencing? Because the cells know what to do. So uh, we're going to cover resetting, resetting your body. Once again, we, if we were perfect environment from birth, we wouldn't have to worry about resetting because we'd be firing on all cylinders already. Unfortunately, if you're like me, you live the Taco Bell diet, and you need to do something to, to fix the damage. So it's kind of like changing the oil in your car. When I was in college, I had a... Um, I was in, when was I in college? I was in college in mid-90s, and I had a bright yellow Chevrolet Chevette, 1980. The, I couldn't keep the girls off me. It was crazy. <laughs> so I had this bright yellow car, and with an old 80, 1980 car, change the oil. You go underneath, right? You undo the little uh, screw, and you let the oil run out. Who's changed the oil in their car? Super easy. I could do that. That doesn't happen with today's cars. I got this... These new fangled cars are all computers. I feel like I need to go on Google to, to friggin' download the instructions to sync to my car, to talk to Siri, to change the oil. I can't change that. But then I could change the oil in my car, and then you ever look at the gunk, the bad oil that came out of your car, right? It's this black, gunky, thick, bad stuff. And then you pour in the oil that you're putting in the car, and it's beautiful gold. It's, I can hear angels singing. It glows. This stuff is beautiful. But then it comes out looking like the, 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 the dark, the dark stuff. And then I knew in my car, I could feel when I needed an oil change. Oh, I, I knew I'd be at the light and I would try to go and then I'd go. Right. Or I could feel it shift between gears and I'm sitting there driving, trying to go on a date and my car's doing this and I'm going between second and third. But I knew in my car because the oil needed it was just gunked up oil. So change the oil. Everything was fine with the car. Everything else was... So let's talk about this car for a minute. My aunt gave me this car. And every time I would push down on the brake, it would stay down so my brake lights were always on. Driving, and this is not safe to drive around like that. So piece of crap car. The, uh, I couldn't... The back, the, the back seat, or whatever the heck it's called, didn't have support. So it was always leaned back <laughs> like this. Gangster real gangster. So I had a stick that I would stick in the back of my seat into the back seat to hold my seat up. Yeah, I'm balling out of control back in the day. So that was that car. But you, your body is like that the same way. Your body right now, if you have never cleaned your body out, you're running at 50, 60, 70 percent of what you should be running at because your oil's dirty, not because you did anything wrong, really. We just haven't changed your oil. And we kind of forgot what it was like to have that get up and go at the light. So it's kind of like that. It's kind of like also another analogy to help you kind of really get this. It's cleaning out, cleaning out the lint filter uh, went with the dryer, right? I've, you know, who's used the dryer and then the clothes go in there for an hour and a half and they're still coming out wet and you're like, what's going, what's going on here? Change the lint filter, what happens then? Hot. The clothes are burning you when they come out of there. So you use, you're getting the same, same thing with your body. You can get the same amount of work out of your body with a lot less energy if your body's working better. You won't need to eat as much food. You won't need to consume as many calories if your body can take the calories that you put in there and use it more efficiently. Same way with this dryer analogy. We're using a lot of energy and a lot of heat, and we're not getting everything that we want out of this. So that's why we reset our bodies, um, because you have a lot of energy that's being wasted right now. That's not me either. This is my buddy Chuck. I uh, went to high school with Chuck, went to college with Chuck. So Chuck is also 40 years old, obviously. I love Chuck to death. The, he'll, he'll find out someday that I put his picture up at one of the events, and then this is going to be a problem. But let's look at a back, let's do the backstory. Chuck's an awesome guy, funny, funniest guy you'll ever, ever meet. Uh, he has a great family, awesome, awesome guy to meet. But 
Chuck has a backstory on how Chuck probably lives his life and the kind of oil that he's putting in his body and the type of things that he's doing. So what do we, what can we tell? What can we assume about, um, uh, Chuck's eating, eating habits? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's the old me, right? Still does that type of stuff. What about Chuck's uh, dedication to maybe going to the, to, to work out every so often to move his body? What would we say about Chuck's not, not happening so much? Tomorrow. I'm going to go to the gym tomorrow. I love Chuck. We're not talking. We're not judging Chuck here. We're just looking for the backstory on, on things that he's prioritized in his life with. And we're the same age. So we go home and they're like, oh, my God, Terry, what are you doing with yourself? Um, so that's, we can tell the backstory on some people just by kind of looking at ourselves. So what's your backstory? What are you doing right now that's going to lead down the line to how your body is going to treat you? Years down the line. What's your backstory on how you're, you're living your life every day? What's the backstory on this guy? Than the man. What do we think? How, how do we think Than eats? What do we assume about how Than's eating? He's eating healthier, right? What do we assume about Than's? Um, Than's a very busy guy. He travels around the country. He's at events. He's running a multi-million dollar company. Does Than make time to go to the gym, you think? Yeah, every lunch I see him. Him and, and him and JD and Conrad, they all run down there and they all head off to CrossFit and they do their deal. So he's making time in his life to make this happen. So I'm going to run through really quickly what toxins are and why that's an important thing. Then we're going to get into the eight steps that you guys can really, really, really take this and run with. But is this resonating so far? Is this kind of making sense about what we're talking about? Does it? And it's it's not so much these wild concepts of how we're going to count our calories. Right? How much sodium we're going to put in our bodies? How much uh, cholesterol? We're not, we're not tracking. Cavemen couldn't track that stuff. I don't understand how that's even possible. But there's a lifestyle that we can live that's going to give you more energy, more vitality, so that you can take this stuff and run with it. But super simple concept, toxins. I used to think toxins were a government conspiracy. <laughs> really, because I didn't understand. It sounds too sci-fi, toxin. They put toxins in your food. It sounds like they were poisoning me. That's not what a toxin, a toxin is, is, a toxin, a simple way to put it, is something that your body cannot digest and something that your body cannot assimilate. So it's not this, this conspiracy theory. For instance, toxins, snake poison, it's toxic to the body, yes? It does bad things to your body. Laser beams, those are toxic as well. Uh, uranium, they have a, a very toxic effect on the body. Your body can't digest it. Doesn't mean it's going to make you sick right away. Doesn't mean you're going to have a bad reaction. It just means your body can't do anything with it. So it either sits there or it comes out. And if you're not drinking enough water and eating enough fiber and thing, it sits there. And we'll talk about the negative effects of that. But if you do wash this stuff out on a regular basis, then toxins, toxins be gone. So anything your body can't process, things like chemical preservatives. You ever look on the back of a can of something you're eating or drinking and you read things that you can't pronounce, right? If it's not a plant, here's a rule of thumb. If it's not a plant or an animal, human beings aren't meant to eat it. If it's not a plant or an animal, human beings aren't meant to eat it. So we're talking about a chemical preservative because we, and they're making this thing in Jersey. They're putting it in a can. It's got to sit for three weeks on the shelf over here in California. We need preservatives to make it last longer than this plant or animal normally would. We put preservatives in there. Medications, drugs, those things are toxins because your body is not a plant and it's not an animal. So your body can't really process it well. What happens to that toxin? Well, for me, it went in all my joints. All these toxins I was putting in, it, it, it hit my joints, it hit my knees, it hit my ankles, it hit my shoulders, it hit my uh, elbows. It, I used to get tennis elbows, just doing the weirdest stuff. So these toxins, what they do, anything that's not a whole food, we take something and process it to death, like, like a hot dog. A hot dog, and anyone seen those videos on how they make hot dogs? Dude, it's this putty, gooey stuff, and they wrap it in a container and fling it out, and you eat it. Uh, that's, that's not really the animal that it came from. So all these things end up kind of being toxins, um, and they end up somewhere in your body. And we'll talk about more how that affects what your, what your health turns into. It hits your weak spot. Um, quick little deal here. Some of us eat super healthy right now. Who thinks they eat a pretty clean, 
healthy, good diet. Good for you guys. You probably, you, you do, right? You probably eat super clean. I eat super clean now. But one thing that I noticed was no matter how clean I eat, there's still other things happening to my body outside of what I'm sticking in my mouth, right? So we got water. We have a certain amount of uh, toxic things in water. You know, they, they put um, chlor- fluoride and chlorine in your water to, for good reason, not trying to kill us. There, there's a long distance between the water plant in your city and your faucet. So they want to make sure it shows up at your, in your faucet without bacteria and damage in it. But then we're still drinking the chemical. And it's not going to kill you, but that stuff adds up. The compound effect of that chemical adds up over time. Right, so if you took a pint of fluoride or a pint of pint of chlorine, would you drink that? Right? Do you think you consume a pint of chlorine over a year of drinking water? Okay, this stuff's doing something. Doesn't go away. Don't freak out, but it does stuff. Uh, there's toxins in food, preservatives. Right? There's going to be toxins in beverages, but then there's the prescription drugs we take. It's not a plant or an animal, so there's some toxic input from that. Uh, there's radiation, cell phones. Stuff like that. Oh, this room, the, everywhere it's full of radiation uh, signatures that affect our cells. Heavy metals. I don't even know what the hell this one says. Um, microbes, parasites, right? We have bugs. We have little things in us. We have uh, bacteria. We have um, uh, viruses. There's stuff. Physical and emotional stress. That's what this one here says. Uh, because when you stress out, you ever get that pit in your stomach when something really, you get some really bad news, you feel this drop. That's your body releasing chemicals that you need to get out of there as well. So there's a lot of intake and toxins coming in on a daily basis outside of just how clean we're eating. So we're going to talk about ways to deal with that so you can keep your vitality and your energy level. So I'm going to go through eight steps on things you can start doing right now so that we can really kind of reverse the hands of time. Because we know we're having daily toxin intake, right, from somewhere. We don't know where it's coming from, but we're getting some in our body. And it won't kill you in a day. It won't kill you in a week. Nothing bad is going to happen in a year, maybe. But then we're putting five years, 365 days, 24 hours a day. We just multiply that out, five years, 10 years. It's the cumulative effect of all these little things that at the end of our, we have one guy that's 80 years old that has, that looks like this and feels like this, and another guy over here at 80 years old that looks like this. It feels like this. It just starts to build up over time. So let's start taking a little, little control of this. Step one. This is going to sound, there's nothing earth shattering, by the way, in these slides. There's nothing amazing that we can go out and put in a package and sell it, right? So there's nothing that you're going to see here that you have probably never heard or thought of before, but I'm going to try to explain why you should do it starting now. First thing you want to do is drink more water. Who's heard that? Drink, I need to drink more water. Okay. Who thinks they drink enough water now? That's good. What about the rest of you? What are you, what are you drinking? You just don't drink at all? Coffee, tea. What else are you drinking? Juice. Anything else? Milk. We'll talk about milk. Beer. Go beer. <laughs> A little more than beer. Um, water of all these steps, if you just drink Half your body weight in ounces of water. Not half your body. We're not talking you drink pounds and pounds of water. That's crazy. You need to carry a a crate with water around with you all the time. If you just increase your water intake, you'll probably start to shed 5, 10 pounds immediately. Immediately. So half your body weight in ounces. I am 190 pounds. What's half of 190? Very good. So I need to drink 95 ounces. So think of how much you weigh, divide it in half, and that's how many ounces that you need to drink. So here's what that looks like. I need to drink this much water every day for my body to do what it needs to do. Right? So this is the jug. How do I know? Maybe I'll just drink a jug to work. And when I'm done with this, by the end of the day, I know I drink what I need to for water. Right? Or it'll be one of these bottles here. Six of these bottles is what I would need to drink in a day for my body to properly work. What's so big about water? Water is the thing that your body's 80% water. Your body's 80% water. So it uses water for everything. It uses water to, 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 get the, your, to hydrate your blood so that you can move energy into your cells. 
right? It uses water. Water is the thing that washes, cleans your body out. So it's a great way to wash out fat, right? If, if we're consuming these toxins and we need more water to consume a bad, to uh, wash out our body constantly, drink more water. That will keep the bad things from staying in you longer. Drink more water. Um, it, it washes out toxins. It cleans out fat. It hydrates your body. It's how we move good things around and bad things around. When you have bad things that your cells are emitting, we need to wash that stuff out. Well, that's what the, that's what the water is doing. The water's job is to clean your body out constantly. What is not water? Uh, soda is not water. Well, it, but it's, but it's liquid, right? I mean, I, to me, it really, I did not drink water until I was about 32. I didn't drink very much water. My father does not drink very much water. He does now. We, he's really making some good advances, but, they never drank water. Man, if you have some Kool-Aid around or something, Kool-Aid was amazing. Um, we did things like milk. Milk is cool. If you want to gain weight, I drink um, three glasses of whole raw milk every day. My intention is to gain weight. Why? Who drinks milk? Who, what is milk designed for? Who's it for? Right, right. And we're drinking cow's milk is what we're getting at the store. The average cow goes from 180 pounds to about 1,200 pounds in a year, and the way they do that is drinking what? Want to be a big cow? <laughs> Drink some milk. Cut the milk out. Unless you're trying to gain weight, then that's cool. Uh, another thing, energy drinks are the worst. Oh, my God, energy drinks are... I used to chug Red Bulls and Monsters, and I remember I was in Brazil one time, we, and all we had for a week at the club were Red Bull and vodkas. Every night from midnight till 7 in the morning. At the end of 7, I felt like my, I, re, I, I really had a scary moment. I thought at the end of that 7 day, I woke up in the morning, my heart would not stop racing for two hours. It was a cra- I was afraid. I tried to look cool, but I really thought I was going to die. It, it alters your body's chemistry way too much. There's too many chemicals in this stuff, and I haven't had a Red Bull since. I haven't had a Red Bull in seven years because I thought I was going to die one morning after partying in Brazil, which is the worst way to go out <laughs> in Brazil. Just die at the club? What's that about? Uh, soda, right? Water is water. Anything that's not water, anything on the label that does not say water, your body does not treat it like water. It is not. It is a solid, right? So if you took a hamburger and you blended it up and made it liquid and drank that, it's liquid, but that's not the same as water, right? Your body does that with every ingredient that's on the thing that you're, you're eating. It does not treat like water. It does not use it to clean out the cells. It, yes. What about the coating on the inside There's all kind of, we could freak ourselves out with, with the, yeah, there's a lot of wild stuff, but we can't freak ourselves out. We're going to be realistic as best we can. But there are, anything that's not, so here we have, we have uh, carbonated water. That's good, the first ingredient. High fructose corn syrup. Is that water? No. Caramel coloring. Is that water? No. Phosphoric acid. Is that water? There's my favorite, natural flavors. It's like a butterfly flew in here and it just gave it some flavor. It's so natural. Makes any sense. Uh, caffeine. So anything that we're drinking that is not water, your body will not use it to wash out fat. Your body will not use it to wash out toxins. Your body will not use it to clean your cells. It's just not water. It's a liquid. Does that mean we don't drink these? We're not going to freak out and not drink it. Hey, just have a couple a day. But you make sure that you figure out if you're drinking this much water as well, because we are not, are we fragile? Are we fragile? No. We're not fragile creatures. We just need to maintain our machine so that it works better and it works better for us. So drink, number one, just start this weekend, drink more water. Are you going to go pee? Yes. It's cool. Go pee. That's what we do. It's not a big deal. I don't want to pee so much. Well, that, how do you think the fat's going to get out? Right? How do you think the toxins are going to get out? We got to pee the stuff out. It doesn't just magically evaporate. So... <laughs> Keep that in mind. All right, I'm behind here. Uh, step one, drink more water. Half your body weight in ounces, drink water. Number two, you want to eat three salads a day. These two steps right here, if you do nothing else, you're sitting pretty. Your body will start to shed the weight because it has what it needs. Three salads a day. What's a salad? Pardon? Pardon? Yeah. A s- kale. That's correct. What else? What else we put in our salads? Good, good spinach, vegetables. Do we cook our salads? No. no. So you can't. So this, the caveat here is some sort of raw fruit or vegetable, preferably a vegetable, 
that you eat with every meal. Why? Well, we need fiber. When we need our body, there's, there's one tube. There's this big tube to go through your body, right? It starts right here and it ends right here, <laughs> right? We have to make sure that the food we're eating makes it through. There's 30 feet. That's a 30 foot long tube. It coils all around and it does a lot of crazy stuff. We have a 30 foot tube. We need to make sure stuff gets out of there in a timely manner. Because if it does not come out in a timely manner, it's sitting in this 98 degree oven, rotting and cooking, and I don't want to disgust you too much. But you need fiber for it to move properly through there. So how do you do that? When, if you're going to eat whatever you're going to eat, eat it, right? If you're having pizza, eat the pizza. I don't care. Put a salad before the pizza, right? Get yourself a salad before you eat that thing. Why before? Because if you eat the pizza and then you try to eat the salad, all of a sudden you're full. You're not going to eat the salad. So trick your body, right? Whatever you're going to order, get that salad with it first so that you get the full benefit of it. You get that, those live enzymes. Well, I'm going to eat a high-fiber cereal. Well, that's cool, too, but we need live enzymes. When you eat a live plant, a live um, vegetable, you're getting the live enzymes. That stuff actually devours the, the, bad, the pizza that you just ate. So we need that to burn the trail to get this stuff out of you. So you want to eat... Three salads a day. How many salads a day? Three. You, can you juice them? Juicing is uh, different. There's no fiber. When you juice, the great thing about juicing is it, it strips out all that fiber so that you immediately digest it in your body and you don't have to go through that. Just, you immediately absorb it. So uh, salads you have to eat. We want the whole plant, the whole vegetable. Yes, sir? Yes, good question. Salad dressing. Um, what's, a, what's a good salad dressing? Very good. What's a bad salad dressing? You already know this stuff, right? I mean, I'll see people get it, which is, I mean, a ranch will not kill you. Don't think, oh, my God, I'm negating the benefits of this salad with this ranch. But you want to get away from that because how do you, what ingredient is in ranch? Milk. Milk and other chemicals, but there's so much milk in there. So you're just, you, you want to get something that's um, oil-based so it looks thin, some sort of vinaigrette, some sort of Italian dressing that's thin, Versus something that's white and thick and clumpier because there's more ingredients involved to make that. So yes, definitely put dressing on there. I don't just eat raw salad. Uh, that's, that's rough, bro. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, number three, stay away from the breads, stay away from the pastas. I know, I know. Italian people, I'm sorry. It's not going to kill you, right? Once again, we have a 30 foot tube. Starts here, ends here. Um, I, I wanted to show a little something with bread. If you were to take some bread, and it's, it's a highly processed stuff. Like bread is not, it's not new. Bread's been around for quite some time, but it's really processed stuff, and it really clumps up. You know, if you were to take bread, put it in water, and let it sit for a few hours, it just gets clumps up. It's like plaster of Paris. Anyone remember plaster of Paris when you were a kid? You take some plaster of Paris, this is powder, you put it with water, it gets to be this gooky stuff, you make designs and patterns in it, and then it hardens up. That's what happens to bread products when we eat them in our body. This tube they go through starts to just clog the tube up. That's all. It's not killing you. It's not this crazy toxic thing. It just clogs up the tube. So it slows the process of your body trying to digest it and assimilate all the stuff you're eating because you have this slow mover on the freeway of your body that's bulking up. And you'll see people with the, with the belly, with the basketball belly here. A lot of that is just food that never made it all the way out. Right, and it's sitting there, and it's taking forever, and they're trying to do the push, the ab crunchers, and they're trying to do all this stuff to knock out this food in there. You're not gonna, you're not gonna crunch away a belly like that. But you need to stop putting things in there; it's gonna slow it down. That's for sure. So you want to stay away from that. What's a good alternative? Uh, maybe try some tortillas. Right, if you're gonna go somewhere and they have a bunch of sandwiches on the menu, say, hey, can I have mine as a wrap? And then they'll take it and tear up all the buns, they'll wrap it up, they'll do the deal, and you have a lot less of a bulking substance in there. And by breads, I'm talking about white breads, wheat, um, any type of the breads out there, because they all go through a, a, a process of processing that fluffs them out a bunch. They're just too darn fluffy to eat. You'll never walk out in the field and see a bunch of loaves <laughs> on the vine out there. Like, oh, this is a great loaf here. This is, this is excellent. You're not going to see that. So this is not as natural as you want it to be. It's not going to kill you, but it's not going to make you any healthier, right? Uh, step four. 
you want to try to get your diet about 70% vegetable. So 70%. So if you look at your plate, you want most of it to be vegetables. Why? Because we need the fiber and we need the enzymes in there. And we're trying to fix 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years of the plate looking the other way. Right? Quite frankly. So we're trying to put a lot. So what does that mean? If you want to eat a whole bunch of meat, just eat a lot more vegetables to make up for it. Eat all the darn meat you want. I'm not an anti-meat guy. I eat meat all the time, three times a day probably. But I guarantee I want to eat more vegetables than your average person will. I'll, I'll destroy some salads. Right? I'll be eating, snacking on carrots all day long, and I'll be eating my celery, and I'll be chewing on cucumbers and eating almonds. I guarantee that when I, earn, I eat that meat, I earn that meat. Right? <laughs> I earn that meat. So try to, when you envision your plate, look at it and make it 70% what you want it to be. Whole foods are very good. We don't have time to talk about that. Organic foods. I used to have such a reverse understanding of organic. Um, who thinks organic, who heard organics is bland, not very tasty stuff. It's, it's just kind of, who, who's heard that view of it? Good. Not a lot of people. You, David Meeks. Excellent. Uh, Memphis. That's how they eat there. I did, I thought organic was this tasteless, flavorless, bland stuff, which is the exact opposite. Organic is a magical term that no one understands. Organic means there was no chemicals used in the making of this product. It doesn't mean it was grown on a special farm with special animals and soil from the moon or anything crazy like that. It just means that they didn't put pesticides on it, right? They didn't do anything wild to the soil with chemicals to make it more, uh, more vital for the food. It just means it was a normal thing. Our grandparents, all they had was organic, right? This non-organic thing is kind of new nowadays. We're the generation suffering from trying to choose between organic and non-organic. So we'll talk more about that at some point in time. And you want to stay away from processed food. Processed foods mean they took something, they put it in a factory, they grinded it up, they removed the fat, they got rid of the fiber, they put it in a can, and now it sits in a, in a box or a can on the shelf in the grocery store longer. So we just want to stay away from the canned food and stay away from the boxed food. It's going to be your step four so you can start to get food that hasn't been very processed and it's a very natural state. Step five, no fast food. Yes, none. Um, why? What's wrong with fast food? Poison. What else? What, what rules does eating fast food break? It's processed. Thank you. High fat. Thank you. High sodium. Thank you. It's, it's super processed. Tons of bread. Everything's a bun or a bread with fast food. No vegetables. You ever go to get a Big Mac? There ain't no vegetable there with the pickle. The pickle, the pickle's the vegetable. <laughs> but if you are, because some of you, I don't expect you to change overnight. If you're going to go to Wendy's, get the combo, get the salad with it. Right? Get the combo with the fries and the salad. Whatever you got to do, but don't try to change. Don't go crazy dramatic overnight. But understand that we just need to help our bodies get more oxygen. We need to help our bodies get more water. And we need to help our bodies clean out the waste. So no fast food, bad idea. Uh, you want to work out about four times a week, right? So because we need to help our, we need to move our bodies around. What does a workout mean? Maybe just go take a walk for 20 minutes. I don't know. We want to start slow. Don't go, don't not have worked out for five years and then start running four miles a day in the snow thinking I'm going to reset my body, right? Terry said go work out. Don't call me with broken ankles and all kind of messed up body parts. Start slow. If you're already working out, change your workout dramatically right now because your body has definitely plateaued whatever you're doing. So if you're doing, if you're in the gym, get yourself a personal trainer to shock your body and get some new workouts. It's going to give you a little different effect. If you're working out pretty hard, do CrossFit. A lot of the Fortune Builders guys, they, do a play, they go to a place called Performance 360, which is similar to a uh, CrossFit type workout. Those guys are in there killing it all the time. They're shocking their bodies all the time. So you need to move your body. You need to move it every day. You need to be walking. You need to be, you have to burn off. You have to help your nutrition to do have an effect on the physical state of your body. So step seven, this will be a fun one. Cheat meal. If you stick to your resetting your body, the, the previous six steps, have a cheat meal or two a week. Doesn't matter. Your body is not so weak 
that some shibata is going to knock you out of the game. Right? Your body's not so weak that a cheese cone is going to take you out if you eat that this week. It's not. But if you are sticking to your diet, we're talking one week, 21 meals in a whole week, one or two meals is not going to kill you. Eat whatever you want. Eat some ice cream. Mm. Eat some pie. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Fruit juices are good. There's a lot of added sugars in fruit juices. So if you can get a fruit juice that does not have added sugar, those are great. Coffee is cool, right? Coffee, what, have them, what, is, what is coffee? It's bean and some water, right? Unless you go to Starbucks, right? You go to Starbucks, it's a frappuccino with a backflip and some couple squirts of this and all kind of this stuff added, some froth, and they're blending it up. Lots of milk. Yeah, coffee is just a bean and some water. We just took it and jacked coffee all up, <laughs> right? So try to get black coffee. Drink some black coffee. But coffee is, is fine. Coffee, a cup of coffee a day is fine. Black coffee. But keep in mind, as we get the double backflip, frappuccino, latte, bubble mente, we're doing stuff to this that is no longer just coffee. So keep that in mind. And just so you guys know, at the end, I'm going to be in the back of the room. I'm going to answer more questions uh, for sure. So come on back. I want to run through this. Um, my time is dangerously low, but I will, I will definitely be in the back of the room for more questions along that line. But get a cheat meal. Eat whatever you want. Once or twice. Don't make it a cheat day. Right? <laughs> it's a cheat meal because you earn. You deserve it. So don't, you don't, you don't have to, to torture yourself all your lives to be healthy. If, you, if you, you, kick your, you kick butt those six days a week, maybe you have two cheat meals in a row. Go for it. I'll do it. So don't think that you have to suffer and have this boring, lame lifestyle to be vibrant and healthy. Um, step eight. Step eight, really step one, but I had to sneak this on the end, some of you guys. Uh, one way to really start your reset is something that we do at Fortune Builders every year, and we do a reset. We do an actual active, hard detoxification of our body. Um, what that is, it's a, it's a temporary thing we do for maybe five to ten days where we clean. This is clean-out day for the body. This is clean-out week for the body. We'll do things like all we'll eat is vegetables and fruits for an entire week, and that's it. Cleans out the body really well, flattens the belly, cleans your skin up, helps get a lot of fiber, move, move things through your body. We'll do juice cleanses where it's crazy enough. We'll just drink juice for seven to ten days, and that's it. No food. Ah, right? But if you think about it, you don't have to have solid food. You're going to chew this stuff up. It turns into liquid in your body anyway. It's not really that big of a deal. We just have this thing in our head that we need a solid thing in front of us. We'll do things like the master cleanse. Like we'll do that for, uh, for seven and ten days. That's where you drink a concoction, this lemonade type substance. I do the master cleanse every year for the past seven years, and I attribute that to why my, uh, my knees and my, my body, my joints work so much better now. I get younger. I promise you I get younger every year, but I, I really do somehow. Um, but this is going to be the first step. If you look at your sheet, one of the handouts describes all these steps right there for you. about what you want to start doing to reset your body. Because the more energy you have, the more confidence you are, the better you're going to get out there and get your deals, the better you are going to be at making, making the, bringing that money into your household, the better you're going to be at having that, that, extra, that extra energy at the end of the work day to go beat your competition out there that's all dried up and tired. So those are the eight steps that you have on there. What do you want to do now? Start today, right? When are we going to start? Why not tomorrow? But tomorrow, it's right, it's tomorrow. We're at a seminar. Geez, we're, we're not at home. We're not in our groove. We'll do this on Monday. We'll do this tomorrow. This, today is just so much going on, right? Bull crap. If you're serious about anything, you're going to start today. If you're serious about what they're teaching you here at the event, you're going to start today. Do something simple. Start drinking more water. Very good. Get your jug, figure out how much of this you need to drink every day, and start drink. help wash those toxins out, wash that fat out of your body. Easiest thing to do is start there with drinking more water. Throw an extra salad on, on your meals to get started. But write down on your sheet right now, on your, what are you going to commit to over the next six months? Figure out what of those eight things that you're going to change. What challenges are you going to address with, I don't have time, right? I don't have the money to... to 
to eat this, uh, to eat right. Isn't that terrible? You have to make more money to be healthy. That's their food stamps. They give them the worst food possible. Those people have no chance. Yeah. So figure out what you're going to do over the next six months to change and commit to that thing. Because it'll be very easy. Oh, it made sense. Terry talked about a tube and it goes into here and cola sucks. And it's very easy to make it make sense but not do anything about it. So challenge yourself. Um, a lot of the things I'm talking about here, I, I maintain a blog because this is really a big passion of mine. If you go to fortunebuilders.com slash reset, it's on your, your form as well, fortunebuilders.com slash reset. It will take you over to my blog. You can follow that. There's a bunch of interesting videos. I'm going to get better at those and a lot of blog content. And you can kind of keep up on different things that you can do specifically to make yourself better. Uh, there's also some suggested readings and some suggested uh, videos that you guys can take a look at to Grow your journey. Grow your journey even more so you can kind of figure out what your body needs to do specifically. But don't use the excuse. You cannot use the excuse that I don't think I can really get healthier because my doctor told me this or I had a friend and this happened to him or I read this study and it told me this. That's bull crap, right? Your body is the most powerful thing that there is on this planet Earth. We're at the top of the food chain. Remember, we eat the other ones, right? You have tons of energy. You can just have to get out of your own way and go slow. Let the process happen for you guys. But this is going to be the thing that's going to make the difference between sticking to your goals with your real estate business. This is going to be the thing that makes a difference with you guys and having that energy to go that extra mile to beat the competition that's out there. Because we're trying to do three things at this. There's three things when we reset our body. Right? First thing we want to do Boost your confidence. Second thing we want to do? Explode your energy. What's the third thing we want to do? That's gonna, what's going to happen after you do that? Who wants fat pockets? Hot damn. Well, listen, I want to thank you guys for putting up with uh, some of the health info. I'm going to bring Ralph on up to the stage. Take it from here. Awesome. Give Terry two claps. Great job, buddy. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it, man. Let me, uh, how many people think that was a pretty awesome presentation? Give me another round of applause. And as, as Stan said, this is something we haven't always, always done. It's the first time Terry spoke here, but did an awesome presentation to our company. And we decided to bring it to, uh, to all of you. But let me tell you what this means to me. What's this number right here? 222. That was my weight, January 8th, 2013. My weight right now is 206. I did a five-day juice cleanse. So for five days, I did nothing but drink vegetable juice. I was uh, My favorite, spinach, kale, beet, and apple. You <laughs> No ginger. I don't like the ginger. How many people have juiced before? Not steroids, but juice. The Jack and Lane stuff. Okay. What I'll tell you is, it's actually very, very easy. You want to know my secret? Throw an apple in it. Just throw an apple in anything, whether you're blending or juicing, and it tastes great. But I can tell you, I used to, I used to weigh 265 pounds at one point. I was 265 pounds. I was, I was big. I was bloated. I used to eat... 10,000 to 12,000 calories per day, per day. And the reason why is to, to train and lift and all this other stuff. But what was interesting, no one ever told me, I used to, I used to always feel bloated and just, just thick and clogged up. If I would have juiced, I think I'd still be playing the NFL. My career wouldn't have been two months, maybe it would have been 10 years. But in reality, folks, here's what I'll tell you. You will have more energy, you will have more passion for what you're doing, and I can promise you, you will make more money if you take care of your health. How many people believe that to be true? Say aye. aye. Really important stuff. And we truly believe in it. How many people get that to be the case? And those of you that are coming to the internet intensive with me, one of the things we always do is Saturday morning, I do a 7 a.m. workout on the beach in San Diego. Yeah. In San so who's ready to do that? Say aye. aye. We're going to get out there and have a great time. But with that, I want to welcome... 
fan to the stage. He's going to talk about how to build your business and how do people think you need more people on your team than just you? 